Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Today we're going to do a tribute to inker Joe Sinnott. Um, I'm actually a little nervous doing this video. I feel like there's more pressure on doing a tribute um, video to someone as iconic as Joe Sinnott is and as important as his work is to comics. So um, what makes me nervous is I don't know his work that well. I'm definitely not a Silver Age expert. And um, although I have um, the IDW Jack Kirby World's Greatest Artist um, Artist Edition, and I believe I have the Fantastic Four one also, um, you know what I mean? I'm just not an expert on Joe's work. But as an artist and as a professional inker, um, I could definitely comment on his work. So let's get crack a lacking because we've got a lot of um, pages to go through. And these are all off original boards, so this should be really, really fun um, for people to see. Um, beautiful brush lines here. You can see these just gorgeous, um, very randomized. I mean, there's a beautiful flow to the lines. He inks this stuff so expertly. His line weights are great too. Um, you know, he he makes it real bold right here. This is a very thick line. I think now I, I would tell someone that maybe this is a little too thick, but it works well. You know, I mean, that's the right idea. And these are such cool lines. I always appreciated this. I mean, based on what I can see, there looks like there's tool, two tools that he possibly uses. I, I don't know if he used some sort of croquil, but I would guess that he used some sort of um, tech pen or pen that could do straight lines like this, like very even weighted lines, whether it was a type of, uh, you know, wouldn't be a multi-liner, but you get what I'm saying, like a, a rapidograph, a multi-liner, or some sort of early er, version of a micron type type deal. Um, and then brush, and he could have used some sort of quill, but I don't know, um, honestly. And, uh, oh man, we could spend forever on each of these pages, but there's so many, so let's just keep moving. Oh, and I can go into full screen mode for this, because uh, it doesn't matter the order. A lot of this will be Jack Kirby, but there are some other artists. I'll try to point out when I see another art penciler working with him, and then also if I can name it. I there, That makes me nervous, too, because it's like, I again, I just don't know. And there was a few, I think one was like a Jim Starling, Starlin piece. One was uh, like Rurik Buckler. I think there's a John Romita Sr., um, some Buscema, Sal Buscema also. This is really, really cool. Very iconic, um, Fantastic Four and human stuff here. And it's interesting. Is one thing I noticed with um, these hills and stuff like that, they look very Mignola. Mignola, definitely. Well, I mean, he was a big Kirby fan. Um, but, but it is interesting to see different influences uh, that carried on through the years that these guys established and, and techniques that were used. I mean, there's no doubt that um, a lot of professional inkers even to this day especially the generation before me um were were influenced by this maybe someone like mark farmer or um uh cam smith i know scott williams said he's a big influence mark Irwin had mentioned it um but you know these guys set the template for a lot of stuff that came after them again very very thick line here do you see how thick that line is but it seems to work he's got a good eye for it and um, it doesn't bother me. That's the thing. That's it's anything goes. And I tell this to people that I do reviews and lessons for. If you can sell it, and it looks fine, then it looks fine. <laughs> so that's the great thing. It's like you want to learn enough information and to 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 sell the sizzle that your art has. Jack Kirby is a perfect example. Now this cover, um, I can't definitively say who this is black bolt and then humans so if anyone knows who did this cover let me know i i don't think it's kirby but maybe it is i don't know this doesn't look just like jack kirby to me some of it doesn't so and again I, I apologize for my ignorance but uh i figured i'd be up front with it so this is rich buckler which possibly if that page could have been from the same artist and it's inked by joe sinnott I don't know if Kibitzer is Kirby himself. It's possible that uh, Kirby um, somewhat edited his own books. Could be wrong on that. He puts a lot of notes sometimes on the pages. You'll see this is all great stuff. Look at the variety of lines and how they get thicker. And if you really look at the, the reverse of it, meaning the white, you see how they kind of like they get smaller. 
He's got a little bit of breathing room and the blacks here and there. Not too much. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to distract from the focus of the face. If he broke up tons and tons of little black areas in here, it could get a little um, sort of uh, too interesting in spots where it doesn't need to be. The black leads the eye. You see, like, like Reed is very, very clear because he's got this beautiful circle that just happens to be on his costume, but this nice shadow and the black around his hair, and it's just really nicely framed. These characters were so well designed. I mean, I, I said it about a million times in um, a video a day or two ago, how great Marvel's characters are, and I know, like, not all this is Marvel, but, um, uh, they're just beautiful designs. They're fun designs. They're very iconic and memorable. And this type of art really has that feel to me. It's just beautiful, beautiful work. And in fact, one thing I'll mention is most of the art that I'm going through here, there wasn't a piece that wasn't less than almost, I think, nine or $10,000. And some of the more expensive ones that we're going to be looking at are, are, are well into the like $150,000 for one page um, or cover. So uh, there's some some really really I mean everything in here is is a gold mine. So this is interesting. This is a stat for a cover, and I think hopefully the next piece that opens will be the cover itself. But um, this is a paste up. You know, if they didn't, if the editor or whoever didn't like how a cover was originally done, they'd take it a second crack at it. You know, and just paste the stuff down. They weren't precious with the art. And uh, okay, here we go. And it just it needed to come in and go out the door. And then the other thing that I love, love, love about Marvel books is this. I think they have the best logos. I love the little, I can't think of what they call this, but like the little indicia box or whatever is really cool. This confused me to no end as a little kid. 123 June. I had no idea what that meant. I was like, is it the first month and 23rd day of June the book came out? I had no idea. And it was so, like, I would have three comic books, and, like, if they were from the same title, like, say I had three Fantastic Four, I, I couldn't put it together. I just wasn't that smart. <laughs> this was the 35th of June, apparently. <laughs> uh, it's funny, you could see all the people in the windows. They probably drew Stan Lee and the, the crew. This is a nice cover. And again, just fantastic logos. I, I just love them. These covers are all so memor memorable. That's, I just, I'm always amazed by that. I wanted to see if anyone looked recognizable. Oh man, look at this, this is so cool. And look at that. I mean, that's just like a little bonus drawing that is so kick-ass. And look at the logo. Oh, my God. I don't know if I... There were so many files that I pulled out to share for this video that I only literally could use about one-third of what I grabbed. Um, and uh, there's a page with Kirby Crackle that might be the best Kirby Crackle that I've ever seen. Senna just killed it on it. It looks so beautiful. It was so good. Um, so uh, hopefully that's in here. If not, I can always do a follow up on this video. But I, you know, I I almost rushed this video, and I was gonna do it literally the day that Joe passed away, and I just wasn't ready. I like I said, I had apprehension because I'm like, man, this is deep water, dude. You're going. It would be like doing a documentary on like the Rolling Stones or the Who or something like that. And you don't know very much about the band except for like you know the the hits or something. So I I wanted to at least mentally prepare for it. So. This is really cool. These lines are neat. I like how they get thicker, but they're still kind of pointy. And anyone I've ever given an ink review to, take note of the this stuff. And and you don't have to emulate this exact look, but but all the ideas that I tell you are are in here. The the direction of the feathering going with the form, the randomness of not randomness but the the attractive look of the flow of the lines and how the white looks cool and the black line looks cool they don't there's not a bunch of random chicken scratch in areas that is going to grab your attention in in bad ways where it pulls your eye he's got this great texture but it sort of disintegrates and sends me to the action you know credit to the penciler too but 
um, you know, if the inker broke it up more, then it wouldn't read so clearly. And again, you got those beautiful thick lines, but it works. And he kind of varies it right here. I think that was a good call. I like I like how the line gets thinner just a little bit right here, and then becomes very almost uh, equally um, thick. But if you look on this guy, I mean, most of the line weights on this dude are not as thick as what are on Red Skull. So it 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 pulls Red Skull forward. It pushes this guy back a little bit. And then you can kind of rotate it, meaning like um, because this is in front of this, these are thinner lines, but he wanted this to be bold. So it's like kind of like thinner here, thicker here, thinner here, thicker here. You can sort of juxtapose things like that. It seems to work. So it's not always going to get thinner as it goes away. Just you don't want stuff to overlap and be too heavy. These are some very, very bold lines. Goodness, that is thick. Thick as a brick. Looks great, though. It's nice. Everything's on point. Black Panther. And again, love this. Just love it, love it, love it, love it. Cool logo. Cool character name. Cool characters that look cool. And all this. Avengers. Dun dun dun. I don't know. 20 cent comic. It's probably early 70s, I guess. 75 ish. Oh man, that's awesome. This is probably early, early 70s. Mm, yeah, this guy's got pretty long hair. He looks like a damn hippie. Get him, Cap. Get that hippie. Beat him up. Look at that. Man, that's some nice inking. Really, really nice. You see just a little bit of texture in here. These are really cool um, areas right here. Man, this looks great. But yeah, this is important stuff. Like, like even if you work contemporary, contemporary, con contemporarily now, um, you can really get a lot from this stuff and and honestly what i found is is um as i um matured as an artist and also as a fan of comics uh, i was able to, to go back and look at this stuff with with fresh eyes um but it always has looked pretty cool to me but but you know that's one fun thing about being an artist and and um being a fan too is your um knowledge base expands and then your um taste will will evolve so it's all it's all fun stuff this is all very cool so applicable to any drawing that you did to, to, today you could you could take this same lighting and throw it on like a you know whatever a jim lee batman hush page put the ears and then just render the shit out of it and i mean it's it's all there in good ways and this is all very fun stuff it's a nice piece that's a lot of work this one Oh, the crowd and stuff would take a while. Oh, look at this. Man, this is great. Stan Lee signed it. That's cool. Man, that is a nice page. Woo! And this is busy, but it still reads very, very clear. You know, honestly. We'll, we'll go back up in a second, but uh, I want to just see the whole thing. Man, that's a great shot of the thing. Look at that. Geometry with a little bit of cast shadow. I knew this would be fun. I was like, I, I took a walk before I did the video to, like, relax. And I was like, you're going to have fun. Once you settle into this video, Rich, it's going to be enjoyable. So don't get nervous. See? Even pro, pro YouTubers like myself. Sometimes these videos, there's a lot of pressure. It's only because I care, though. <laughs> it is. These are interesting lines. <coughs> guess some kind of marker maybe <clears throat> I mean it could be a brush they could be using a lot of different brushes too it's like like in my mind when I think of a brush I think of a brush with a pointy tip but I mean there's a lot of different sort of cuts that you can get on a brush that make different effects so it's hard to say this is some pretty cool curvy crackle this is nice I like this I want to say it was a silver surfer page we'll see it's a pretty cool figure and again, look at that, how thick that line is there. Man, it's thick. Thick and rich. I love this. These This lighting, like, on the figures. It's so stylized, but it looks so cool. He does it here, too. 
bloop, bloop, and then whack, whack with the brush, and it's looking good. Kirby does really, really nice faces. Like, like this is just, it's like on point. And it's really, even to this day, we sort of indicate small faces with about the same amount of detail. It's like the little shadow for the nose. Maybe you show this nostril, the eyes, the eyelashes, and then a little bit of highlight on the lips. I mean, that's, you know, that's still a standard today. Same with there. And these are inked very, very nicely. These faces are on point. Um... You know, if you ever see uh, Kirby inked by other people, you'll you'll see all kinds of things appearing in the work. But Sinnott was so good that he made the stuff. He kept it very, very um, well drawn, which is very, very important because these eyes could look wacky. You move the pupil or have one of the eye eyelid lashes too thick or whatever, even the mouth, you know, any of that stuff drifts. It won't look like Kirby, you know. It'll, it'll have that feel, but it'll also feel different, you know, and that's why people have favorite inkers on certain pencilers, because it's it's what they picture in their mind, you know, hopefully what the, the penciler pictures. Yeah, it's really, really good. So hopefully this is fun. Okay, so we got a little John Buscema with Jolt and Joe on the inks. Look at that. So it maybe looks to me like he does what I do with his ink. This is interesting. I, I never really noticed this before. But so either th there's I'm going to put two guesses out here is that that um, he uses older ink for the black areas when he fills it in and it's a little bit darker or he fills in his blacks after he erases the page. So he probably did these brush strokes and then after he erased the page did the black ink here and that's why it's darker. Um because uh, when you erase the page, the brush stuff will fade. Um, but also, like, when I do feathering, I use my inking ink, meaning ink that I use for my day work. When I fill in my blacks, I use old ink. Everyone always wants this, this secret to super black ink. It's really, really simple, I swear to God. Any ink, if you let it oxidize, meaning if it sits out long enough, it gets thicker and it gets blacker because of that. That's it. Don't let don't let inkers online try to sell you some bullshit about a blend that's gonna get your ink black. You can do that too, but you can also just leave out your ink for a day and a half and it'll get thicker and thicker. You don't want it to get too thick, but it'll be black as night. And if you let it go too long, it'll turn into tar and then almost like glass. <laughs> so find that happy spot. I leave my ink out all the time. I've told people that a million times in videos, but uh, I use Ultra Draw and sometimes Pelican and sometimes, uh, what is this? I use uh, Speedball and I even have some of the um, uh, Eon board ink, which is the F5, the big one. Um, they're all a little different, but they all will do the same thing if you leave them out, which is they'll thicken. And that's what you want for those beautiful black blacks. Sometimes it'll get shiny, you know. It'll it gets so kind of like tarish. So, yeah, this is all really cool. Love it. He's so he's so efficient, man. Like I mean, it's just there's no there doesn't there's such a confidence to his lines when he puts them down. This doesn't look fussy at all. And the other thing that I'm noticing with this too is he's very like like when he fills in his blacks, there's not all these like little uh, like he doesn't miss the edges. You can see little little sp spritzes of it, but uh, that's a real art form, you know, because a lot of times as inkers we'll outline this stuff and then we'll hit it with the black. And what happens is you get little things like this, little anomalies, little areas that maybe hug the line that don't fully get black and if enough of them are there it kind of starts to make the piece look a little a little um less than you know so you have to watch that this is cool all the notes and stuff are super fun to read but i don't have time to go over that right now but it's you know lettering or, or you know dialogue suggestions by uh probably kirby um, fun stuff and who knows maybe even stan after Someone in the comment section will know better than I am. And you can see the paper on this one has started to yellow a bit more. And, and you know, sometimes they would really, really do huge whiteouts on pages. It's pretty crazy sometimes in those artist edition books when you see the uh, changes that they make. This is a really nice page. This is, so it credits George George Perez here, 
but I'm almost, I'm nearly sure, well, it's signed by George Perez. They credited Starlin, so I don't know if Starlin maybe did some pages in this, but I remember on the Heritage Auction, there was a mention of Starlin, <clears throat> I believe, with this piece, so who knows, but uh, it looks like, I mean, it was signed by Perez, so I'm going Perez uh, penciled it. This is, they're nice figures. I don't know if I saw this, if I would know it was George Perez. This looks like George Perez to me, but this looks like kind of Kirby-ish. This a little bit too, and this too. But not, not spot on Kirby, but this doesn't feel like Kirby, I guess. It's interesting. Man, that is so thick right there, but it looks good. This is really nice too. Man, he was such a good inker. This is kind of fun too. Look at the the up here you see how like there's like this nice thick line and then these that go next to it and then a little thinner and then thinner here it really gives a nice variety you know and it's all attractive like there's not any lines that don't look like they're um unintentional you know he didn't have one drift like slightly off off uh the form it's important this all looks good this is all very cool nice again i mean that's almost like any comic book artist if you were drawing a head that size it's about how much detail you put really nice nose oh yeah this was on the back of one of the drawings i thought it was kind of fun. so 1974 and this is rich buckler and joe sinnott uh not not this piece but uh i think it was on the back of this page they maybe wanted a stat for that face Really nice dynamic pose right there. And those are some chunky lines, man. That is thick. Thick lines. Well, I hope that this is fun and something a little different for some people and, and for people that are huge fans of Joe Sinnott and Kirby and all these great pencilers. I hope it's enjoyable looking at these beautiful scans provided by Heritage Auctions and Richard Friend with his YouTube channel. <laughs> But I, I, I had a couple of people recommend this, but I, I had mentioned that I already kind of had planned to do it. But that definitely put me over the edge where it was a definite must. This is awesome. Look at that. That right there is so cool. And I love them breaking the panel border here. And this is great, too. How fun. Man. If you're like a 12-year-old kid and you see this on the shelf, you're going to be like, hell yeah. Death to the Hulk? Does he die in this issue? Could it happen? Could Submariner kill him? That's what they would like you to believe. And depending on how young you are, you might actually think that could happen. Or maybe not. Some kids are pretty sharp. <laughs> I was a more go with the flow. I I don't like to, like, if I watch a movie, I don't try to figure out the ending. I just go in like a blank slate and just sort of stare at the pictures and let it take me on a ride. Unless it's just glaringly obvious. Oh man, this is cool. Oh, I love the lighting on that. Oh man, this is so cool. <laughs> That's a great Captain America pose. So Dave, this might be Dave. Oh, it is Dave Cockrum and Joe Sinnott. Wow. John Buscema and Joe Sinnott. Mighty Thor. It's a very cool technique with the razor blade. And they scrape the paper and it gives it that stippled uh, line. It's really, really neat. Neato. Man, look at this. This character is awesome. Wow, oh, that is so cool. I love the forms. She's just so big and chunky. And look at that leg. Those are powerful legs. This is great, too. Such an unusual, like, like running pose, but it works so well. And it's really, really cool. I think most people, if you were going to lay a, a running pose out and you weren't trying to do something like this, you wouldn't probably go this route. But, man, the torque on the leg is just so cool. And then this leg going back into space, it's, man, and this is great. This is cool, too. This is nice, also. That's a very, very neat face. And Killer Inks. 
It looks good. That's tricky. You can tell it was lettered on the board before he did it, because he's stopping on the, the at least the word balloons. That would be tough. I've done it long, long time ago, but not uh, recently. Oh man, look at this. This is a great page. He's smoking. Very, very cool. That's wild. This is really good. He does these looking into the panel um, profiles really are always very, very solid. This is nice. Some of these will go through a little faster because I, I want to make sure that we get everything. And I also, I got a lot to do today, so. Very, very cool. Man, the inks are great on this. And again, do you see the randomness of the lines? Not randomness, but uh, I keep saying randomness. I mean, um, that, that there's like a, like thinner, thicker, 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 closer together, and then they blend. Thinner, thicker, 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 blend, and they're blending together. It's really important. But that's how you do fades, friends. That's how you do fades. And even with lines, same deal. Thinner, they're further apart as they get thicker, start to move them closer together. And with hatching, too, same deal. These are all really nice. That's hard to do. And, it, like, for me, I would do these with a Hunt 102 and a, a straight edge and just, you know, put the straight edge down and then flick them. I would do some of these with a brush. These I would do with a brush. My lines, I would probably overthrow them now, though, a little bit. But he's stopping on a dime. It's pretty cool. He may have put tape down. It's possible to keep a clean edge. There's a little bit of white out right there. You can see. That's why it's fun to see these original um, scans like this. This is like our own artist edition book I cobbled together. This kind of has a Mignola feel. Whoa, shoot. Sorry, I went too. I didn't mean to do that. That sucks. Only four of you wear a suit. That's a really nice Reed Richards thing. is crazy these guys were all so talented man bedlam at the Baxter building all oh, the notes it's crazy we can pause it and read that if you would like and again, look at how bold that line is. It's crazy. These fingers are nicely done. I like that he didn't connect the line there a little bit. The buildings all look cool. You know, I mean, I I honestly, even to this day, would not have a problem with something like this if someone drew in this type of style. Because I think, it, it, I mean, it could feel very retro depending on how you actually, like, um, did it. But uh, it's very effective storytelling. You know, there's a part of me that, that, that embraces the... Um, the original idea of how comic books were drawn and it's great to see the evolution post image and post you know 2000 and up to where we are now with people digitally inking and using you know um what, who would be the three it's uh jorge jimenez pepe laraz and uh there's another one that does real good at digital inking but but uh you know this stuff is also very cool you know Think that there's still a place for something like this when again you could look retro you'd have to really uh work it out but, uh, that's cool that's really neat to jerry a great guy probably jerry seinfeld no <laughs> oh man that's a great pose and these are nice brush lines right here this is all really good space let's see uh, it looks like the white of the paper i don't know if that's white ink a little hard to tell me i guess it is white ink really good white ink it's it's kept its look for many many years and not uh aged too much oh it's cool this is cool too that's nice oh man look at this going into the machine 
Welcome to the machine. I bet Kirby was listening to that when he drew this. <laughs> it's all right, we know. <laughs> Uh, man, stuff like this reminds me of Travis. It's funny. It's like I, I bring up Travis in a lot of videos, but but uh, Travis Travis has a little bit of Kirby in his stuff. I've always felt that when I when I recognized it. I don't know if it's intentional, but uh, yeah, it's like he's kind of got this like Kirby Mobius thing going on. Did uh, you, you have to look at the right stuff? He's got a lot of iterations, but. Uh... Oh man, look at that. That is so cool. God, that Modoc is great. <laughs> and those are cool lines. They're beefy, but it's again, there's that nice staggered effect with them. And boy, it looks attractive. It looks really good. This is cool too. <laughs> nice Hulk. Hey, wanna go grab some fries? <laughs> oh, it's really cool. And it's loose. It's got some loose spots. Like this down here is kind of loosey goosey. But it looks cool, like in here too. It almost doesn't look like Sinnet's inks, like right here. It's funny, like I, I, it, this very well because it looks like a stat. Do you see? Someone went in and changed this. This probably was the Mar Marvel bullpen on his his pants. I, you, I bet this is what it was. I bet he was like this. I bet he didn't have the pants on, and it was just the leg. And so they got some um, <laughs> bullpen artist to draw this. But boy, he couldn't ink like Sinnet very very clearly man that is like not even in the same stratosphere you want to get out of the bullpen son you're gonna need to up your game i will say that there's no excuses as a pro person to have that poor of inks i'm putting it out there and saying that it's like that was not good i don't even care how rushed you are you could have done like that that wouldn't be that hard that was very like that would take five minutes to fix Unless the editor did it. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Which I think in the back in the day would sometimes happen. You know? Again, the art wasn't that precious. And if, if it needed to be done and they had to get it done, then maybe they wouldn't even go to the bullpen artist and they would just, uh, you know, do it themselves. I like this cover a lot. I think it's really, really cool. Like, it's. Oh God, their logos are so freaking awesome. Just the way that they're set up. It's just brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah, this is so cool. Those are long lines. And they look freehanded, too. That would be tough to do. Again, chunky line. Oh, look at this. Cap. For all you inkers, again, pay attention to this stuff. He does it well. And here, look at that. Man, that's nice. Right there. He was on point. These are good too. These almost look like 102 lines. I'm not saying that it was a hunt 102, but but these look like a nib line to me. Is it's about what mine would look like if I was throwing them down the crocodile. So, but these look like brush. Yeah, but they're a little darker. You see, they go down a little darker, and the paper tears a little. And brush lines will go down quite smooth. Oh man, this is such an iconic page. I can see a little bit of the pencil still on the board. Here, too. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Great design for a character. Man. That was epic. That's really cool. Oh, look at this. Can make this a little wider. I think this will work. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this page, man, it's got so many paste ups up here. It's crazy. Check that out. Interesting spot for the price too. Man, they slapped it right in the middle of the, the board. This is pretty scratchy inks, but it it looks good. It's a little like it looks a little more frantic. It's still solid. Man, this stuff is money right here. Man, these are great little drawings. And the inks on this are very, very cool. 
you can see it kept the blacks nice and solid and then just has as, as it moves away from this very graphic shape that, that is very important to the composition then he breaks it up a little bit but these are power lines this is all framing stuff you don't want to break up your power lines says Richard friend oh man that's cool Yeah, this is a really neat piece. <laughs> he must have had rendering or something that they whited it out. Nice torque on her body. Look, her butt is facing us. And he brought her chest all the way around. It's a nice, nice idea. The buildings in the black background are very, very flat. I mean, there's a little tiny bit of line weights with the inks here and there. Nothing too extravagant, but I mean, it really is just outline. But it's supposed to push back that's the thing we don't want we're not focusing so much on the background as we are on this incredible moment here in the foreground so yep looks cool this is Busema. very very cool man that's awesome oh, really good a little more, a little more. That's a cool pose. Man, Busema could draw his ass off. That's so classic, Busema. Wow. That is a really cool little sequence right there. I'm Ben Grimm again. It's interesting. I don't know if I just saw that, if I would know it was Ben Grimm. But I like it. I, I think that that's actually very, very cool. I've never drawn the thing. But I would like to. Now the question is, is would I tweak the original design? Or would, like, like how Todd and I guess Walter Simonson did it? Or do something else? That's a great Reed Richards. Man, he is handsome. That is such a great little drawing. The fact that Kirby can do stuff so bold and then do something with so much f finesse and then that someone like Senate can ink it and nail that face is just so much badassery. This is great, too. Again, I love how Kirby lights her lips. Lights her lips. This is John Romita Sr., if I'm not mistaken. And it's a very, very cool drawing. Man, that's powerful. And Spider-Man here, he's got the the W, not the M, right? We were debating that. It was funny, people pointing out that after uh, we were checking out how Didco did it, he switched it like in every panel. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> this is a funny piece. Must have been a gift for someone at the office. Oh. Okay, and this is... Is this a jam piece, or is it... So, I guess it's Bus... Oh, Sal Busema. And Senate. It's cool. Lots of neat characters on it. Lots of my favorites. I love Ghost Rider. Deathlock is awesome. The Hulk, Nightcrawler. It's all good. All good. I hope that this is fun. Oh man, this is a nice cover. This would be expensive. This is probably one of those pieces that was like over a hundred grand. And who knows, now it could be even more. The thing is, is some of these pieces may have sold 10 or 15 years ago. So sometimes it's deceiving because you go, oh, it was only 150 grand. And it's like, yeah, that was then. Oh, that was the last piece. Okay, all right, have a great day. I gotta go. It actually, the video went a little longer than I thought it was gonna go. But uh, yeah, that was really fun. I'm looking forward to actually watching it back myself and soaking in the art even more. So have a great day. Have a super fun Sunday. And uh, thank you for uh, following my YouTube channel. All right, later.